divided among you as you like. When the cost is recovered, 100 pounds. You read the poem, seen the movie. Now try the real thing. Riding, man from snowy river style. You don't need experience, just a bit of gumption. All my life I've loved the mountains, horses and people. That's probably why I decided to start these uh, safari adventure tours. Give people a chance to uh, see the mountains as we see them. On the back of the horse, not carrying the pack or not in the four-wheel drive. For 16 years, Jack Lovick has been giving city slickers a taste of mountain life. His life. He led the safaris himself until a recent hip operation turfed him out of the saddle. Now his daughter-in-law, Glenda, has taken the reins. Well, I was a hairdresser before I was married, and riding through this country, I'd say you definitely got to fall in love with it, because you've only seen the beginning of it. It's getting up into the mountains, it means the things. What sort of changes do you see in people who start these courses from when they start to when they end? I start, I'd say they're very nervous and wondering what's going to happen, and for the next, say, five days, they, they relax. You can see them relaxing. Naturally, the refreshments do help, but most riders say it's the horses and bush which put them at ease. I just love the scenery, love the horses, and uh, it's, it's a very good time. I've been coming two or three times a year for about the past ten years. And why, why do you keep coming back? It's a break. I love the countryside. I enjoy the riding. You sure it's the riding you come for and not the beer in the evening? Well, let's see. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and the buddy rum. <laughs> come evening, there was plenty of that and a bit of food at Halfway Settlement, site of the original gold mining town. This is real Lovick territory. It was bought by the family in 1885, after the mines closed down, and they've been mountain cattlemen here ever since. This is my country, and I just love what it's all about. As a kid, I imagined myself another man from Snowy River, and now, approaching old age, I suppose you'd say, I still feel the same way, a man from Snowy River. imagined ourselves that way by the end of the night. But the fantasies didn't last long. The Lovics have a way of bringing beginners back to reality. I can personally guarantee it. get out of it? They get a terrific kick. It, they're exhilarated all the time. The adrenaline starts to flow. It's real adventure. And if it's not adventure, we make it adventure. Like uh, putting me in for a drink? Uh, like that, yes. Sometimes, though, riders get more adventure than they bargain for, as Andrew McIntosh discovered on an earlier safari. We were all burling down this hill in a wild gallop, and... Um, the whole pack sort of went to go left and I decided I'd go right and um, we ended up going straight and so there was a big tree in the, in the way of course so we went so the horse sort of went down on its knees and the a branch sort of got me across here and broke a couple of ribs and my lung collapsed so it was pretty major I suppose. Yes but that's not serious. Not serious? No of course it's not. No serious is when you um well, when you have a fractured skull, uh, something like that. Luckily on our ride, there were no serious injuries, just a couple of dislocated shoulders. But is it worth the risk? You've only got to ask any of these people that are with us now what they think of their experiences. I'm quite sure you won't find anyone at all, even the unfortunate ones that have fallen off, 
uh, to uh, cane it, say it's bad, it's no good, or show, ask them, are we doing any damage anywhere? Not in your life, we're not. And as for safaris giving you an affinity with nature... Well, trail riding certainly does give you a feeling for the bush, and one I'll be feeling for a few days after.